Having said that, let's see what we can do with the following section. In this section, we are going to introduce the idea of a transformation. And a transformation is nothing new. You've seen these uh, many times before under a different name. A transformation is just a function except that instead of going from the real numbers to the real numbers, it's going from Rn to Rm. So, I mean, you've seen this 10,000 times, but that's you know, it can be easy to forget stuff. Let's make sure we are on the same page. A function is a rule. It takes values of R n and uniquely assigns them to values in Rm. And by uniquely, we can't have one vector that's being transformed or being sent to two different places. So we can't have a transformation that sends one, two to both zero, one and two, three. That's a violation of uniqueness. Other than that, this rule can be whatever we want, although we're going in this class at least to be looking almost exclusively at some sort of special transformations that have additional properties. In particular, this is our first clear use or our first clear application of matrices that has nothing to do with solving systems of linear equations. If we have a matrix A, and this is an M by N matrix, we can use this matrix to define a transformation that takes the vector and multiplies it by the matrix. This is a transformation from Rn to Rm. And we'll see that transformations like this are very powerful tools. We can study a lot of stuff using transformations. And as I say, 
we're sort of moving away from where linear algebra started because this transformation has nothing to do with any system of linear equations. This matrix A is not an augmented matrix. It's just a rectangle array that we're using to define a transformation. I mentioned just a little earlier that in this class, we're going to be looking pretty exclusively at a special class of transformation. Now, I should, I mean, because transformations are just functions, I'm kind of assuming that Definitions like domain and range are not, do not need a lot of explanation. We still call R N the domain. We still call R M the code, codomain. We still have the range, it's the part of the codomain that gets mapped to, so inputs are domain, output are range, the range is living inside the codomain. So all of those definitions from my college algebra, and then we see them again in calculus and crop the other places, they're all still definitions. A transformation really is just a function. So a, uh, a more significant definition, a transformation is called linear. So a linear transformation, if it satisfies two properties. Property one, for every pair of vectors, V and W, applying the transformation to V plus W is the same as applying the transformation to V, applying the transformation to W, and adding those together. So T of V plus W equals T of V plus T of W. Property two. For every scalar C and vector V, T of C times V equals C times T of V. That is to say, you can pull scalars out of the argument. And where does this definition come from? 
Well, this definition is very directly inspired by transformations T of X equals A times X, because this transformation is the prototypical example of a linear transformation. T of V plus W equals A times V plus W. Multiplication distributes over addition. A times V is T of V. A times W is T of W. T of alpha times V is A times alpha V. We can move scalars around. This is alpha times a v, and this is then alpha times t of v. So this is kind of the prototypical example of a linear transformation. There are linear transformations that at first blush seem like they have nothing to do with matrix multiplication. Um, Let's see if I can argue this out. The transformation that takes a vector and rotates it uh, counterclockwise by theta radius. As I say, at least that first blush, here's a transformation that has nothing to do with matrix multiplication. It is a linear. I'm just going to sketch this out, see if I can make this convincing. So we're in R2. Um, and we've got a vector V and a vector W. And we rotate V and W by some number of radians. So here's T of W. And here's T of V. And according to the parallelogram rule, here's V plus W. And what we want is T of V plus W to equal T of V plus T of W. 
So again, let's see if I, my R is obviously not the best, but again, using the parallelogram rule, here's T over V plus T of W. And the argument that we're making, I got these vectors mixed up. That's T of V, this is T of W. But the argument that we're making is that if we rotate V by theta to go from here to here, and we rotate W by theta to go from here to here, and we rotate the origin by theta, and when the origin is rotated by theta, it stays put, it goes from here to here. In other words, if we're taking three corners of a parallelogram and rotating them by theta, well, the parallelogram is rigid, so the fourth corner must also be rotated by theta. So this parallelogram is rotated to this parallelogram. This corner V plus W is rotated to this corner T of V plus T of W. And that's precisely this statement that if we take V plus W and rotate it, we'll wind up at T of V plus T of W. The other condition of linearity is a lot easier. The other condition of linearity just says, well, suppose you have some vector and you scale that vector and change its length. And then you take this new vector and you rotate it. Well, that's the same as first taking this blue vector, rotating it, and then let me get these at least sort of to scale, and then scaling it. So rotating, then scaling, or scaling, then rotating, the order doesn't matter. At some point, you're doubling the vector's length, let's say. At some point, you're rotating it. It doesn't matter what order you do those things in. So there's a linear transformation. We'll come back to that one. It has very important applications. Let's take the uh, questions first of all. Let's state the theorem more to this theorem. I'm not going to say we'll use it constantly in this class, but it's a pretty famous theorem. And it's nice because it lets us, I mean, because the proof lets us see how we might use this linearity property. What this theorem is saying is that if T is linear, then the zero vector is mapped to the zero vector. And you want to be a little careful. I mean, you want to remember that our domain and our codomain might be different. We might be going from R3 to R2. And if we are, then this theorem is saying 
the zero vector in R3 is sent to the zero vector in R2. So even though we're using the same notation on the left and the right hand side, we have a zero with a bar over it. These two vectors might not be the same. But as I say, the proof of this is, is very elegant and it provides a nice little window into how you can use linearity. T of zero equals T of zero plus zero. The zero vector plus the zero vector equals the zero vector. And then linearity lets us break this apart. So you can subtract T of zero from both sides of this equality. And you get that the zero vector equals T of zero. And let's give one more theorem. This theorem is sometimes used as a definition, as an alternative definition for linearity. The way we have linearity set up, if you want to check whether a transformation is linear, you have to check two different properties. There's an addition property and there's a scalar multiplication property. Theorem. T is linear if and only if. For every combination of scalars C1 and C2 and vectors V1 and V2, T of C1, V1 plus C2, V2 equals C times T of V1 plus C times T of V2. So notice what we're doing here. We're kind of collecting sing our two conditions down into one. We've got this addition that we're breaking apart, and we've got these scalar products that we're breaking apart. And as I say, this, this could be used as a definition linearity. Instead of it being a theorem, this could be our definition. And then this statement here would be a theorem instead. So it really just depends on what you like. If you like having two relatively simple statements, or if you like having one more complicated statement, it amounts to the same thing. But not 
sorting if that takes us to the end of the section, but it about takes us to the end of the class period. So we'll pick up um, with linear transformations next Tuesday, and I will see all of you then.